This conference will now be recorded. We're starting off with a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, Marion County Commission, May 10th, meeting at 1230. Uh, if you have any public comments, either get online or post them either way. We don't have, well, we do have some public in here today. Don't know if she has a comment or not, but uh, but if she does, we, we could grab them. We do allow public comments to start with. I think step right over there to that mic if you'd like to. No, I won't. Okay, no comments here. We have something there? Yes, you, have, you do have a public comment on the uh, virtual meeting. <laughs> what? Uh, it says the Northern Wind Project, Diamond Vista, and now has been in full operation for about a year and seven months. Despite the signed road maintenance agreement, they left Marion County taxpayers holding the bag on the $473.20. $473, for the various road damages they caused to our roads. I want to know, as of today's date, has this debt, I think it's supposed to say debt, has this debt been paid? How long will this commission allow this outrage breach of contract continue? That's from Diane N. I believe that it's on its way. We just, according to our uh, legal counsel, I think, I think that's what we was last advised. So we have not seen it yet, correct? No. We have not, yeah, no. We have not seen it. Okay. Is there any it's other commissioner here comment on it? Yes. Uh, Brad might have an update when he gets here. Yeah, that's it's, it's uh, yeah. With that being said, moving on to the <coughs> agenda approvals. Anybody have anything to add to the agenda? I don't know, is Brad supposed to be here today? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I guess if, if I want to employ personnel, I'm going to have to set it myself and, and do it myself, get it done myself instead of Brad. Uh, we'll, I'll set that up. And we'll make sure it's on the agenda. Yeah. Employ our personnel, personnel for next all, all elected. Yeah, but that'd be for next week. I mean, oh, we, don't, we haven't contacted the employee or anything. So. And I thought it was going to be on here this week. Um, I'm going to let that <coughs> He has different plans. Maybe he's contacted the employee. I don't know. Um, any, anything else to add to the agenda? If nothing else to add, well, I, we'll move into administrative business. Yeah. Okay. I did receive a COVID update this uh, this morning. As of 7:30 this morning, Marion County has 693 confirmed PCR cases and 389 probable cases. There are five active cases, zero hospitalizations, and 24 vital statistics confirmed deaths. Marion County's 14-day rolling positivity rate through May 1st is 15.5%. Um, information is found on the KDHE website under COVID-19 metrics and then nursing home metrics. Information on COVID-19 variants by county can be found on the Variants of Concern tab. In Marion County, out of 18 specimens sequenced for variants, seven variants of concern and one variant of interest have been detected. Last week's vaccination clinics, Moderna, 40 booster and 11 prime doses administered. Johnson & Johnson, eight doses were administered. This week's vaccine clinic will be at the Lake Hall on May 11th with approximately 40 Moderna prime and booster doses. The online scheduler remains open for Moderna vaccine on May 11th, May 18th, and May 25th, and June 1st. 
Additionally, on May 20, there will be an evening clinic at the health department from 4 to 6 p.m. for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. Okay. Appointments can be made online or by calling the health department. Walk-ins will also be accepted for the evening clinic. Any comments on the COVID deal? All I can tell you is that Harvey County Newton paper last week said they'd had their first case of one of the new, vir new viruses from across the seas. That's, that was last week's news in Newton paper. So it's real close. I don't have no other comments unless somebody else does. Uh, checked on it today. Uh, Talking about the outbreak in India, the um, but uh, biotech uh, one of the works with Pfizer or whatever one of the two has said that the data that they are receiving is that it, the vaccine works on the new variants. So good deal. Your microphone on, Jeremy? Can you make sure? I think it is. Yeah, it is. It's just okay. Anyway. All right, thank you. Okay. Go packet you did have a notification uh, that um, County Attorney Joel Enzi has appointed a special prosecutor for Marion County case 21 CR 77 so that information was in your packet I have the minutes of May 3rd did anybody everybody read them and did I hear a motion Motion to have a motion to approve by Jonah. Do I hear any second? Second by Dave Mueller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. some change orders today. some salary change sheets. Okay. First one will be for Road and Bridge, uh, for Ronald Wirtz from 2362 to 2408, a one-year raise. 
Road and Bridge, Corey Seacat, six six month raise from 2319 to 2362. Sheriff's Office. Joe, I'm going to apologize if I can't pronounce your last name. Walter Chill, I believe. He's a one year raise as a deputy from 1732 to 1799. There are. Somebody correct me on the spelling of how to pronounce that. Communications Dispatch, Colleen Mitchell. Six month raise from 1464 to 1492. And last, Sheriff J.L. Donaldson Stevens. Six month raise from 1338 to 1363. We do have some early checks totaling $4,250, and the approval is in your purple notebook there. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve $4,250. Checks, there's two of them. One of them is a uh, chance law firm, and the other is to a, I read it earlier, to a class. English class. Is that what it's for? I think so. Acid rebound LLC. Yeah. It's for yeah, so it's for protocols. Protocol. Application. Yeah. Okay. Second. Motion. I have a motion by Jonas, second by Dave. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five oh. Meeting, you made a motion to designate um, this week as Law Enforcement Appreciation Week in Marion County. So I went ahead and uh, drafted a proclamation for you. This, this is a, probably a prettier copy. 
Because oh, okay. it has the color striker in them. Oh, okay. <laughs> all righty. So we've done made the motion. So really all it needs is to turn the signature. Is that correct? Or do we need to? I would just go ahead and have you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, make a motion to uh, adopt this proclamation. Oh, okay. I'd make that motion to adopt the Marion County Law Enforcement Appreciation Week. 29th through May the 15th. Uh, sort of interesting when this started. This gives a little bit of history here. In 1962, John Kennedy started this thing. So it's been around for quite a while for that. So I'll second it. Have a motion by me, second by Kent Becker. All those in favor say aye. 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 interesting do you remember john, john kennedy john? Yeah. yeah that's i mean it's interesting to well, sit here beside youngsters and well uh, <laughs> yeah, the, i think i was barely alive for carter <laughs> okay <laughs> 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 yeah it's history well it is history all right, on the table there, I also gave you, you'll see a proposal from No Wink. Yes. Um, yeah. So we have a total of 11 electronic pull pads from No Wink, and five of them are um, needing to be replaced, and they're offering that new version. They're also offering a buyback from, for our old version. We have a total of 11 of them. I'd like to go ahead and replace them all right now so that we're on the same platform all the way across. And the total cost to do that is four thousand one hundred nine dollars, including the buyback. Any other comments from anybody? What do you do? Just load the software that you have presently onto them. Uh, no, they. We work with that vendor. They they actually have to do it. We can't do it ourselves here. So. This catches you up to speed for the yes, it does. for the next election. Yes, it does. I'd make a motion to accept and pay the $4,109 for all 11 uh, units. Has this been a, another question? Okay. Has this been a company you've dealt with before? We've been dealing with them since we went to electronic full books. Okay. Yes. Okay. They're our current vendor. Okay. i second. <clears throat> have a motion by me, second by Jonah Gehring. All those in favor say aye. 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 By the way. You don't need much memory on those. We run the one, we just run one program on it and that's it. Okay. Yeah, I don't need much memory. No. <laughs> Keep it clean. They're used for only one purpose. Yeah, because it's all down there. Yeah. <laughs> One other piece of information, uh, well, I gave you two other pieces of information on the table. Um, one of them is a little um, worksheet that looks like, like this. Commissioner Mueller asked in regard to the potential, the proposed pay plan update, what the associated benefit costs would be for those wages. And of course, the wages of the 171,573 that was, um, that Melena gave you, that is including part-time and elected officials. So the benefit numbers that I have that I'm going to give you are actually larger than they truly will be because part-time individuals are not eligible for CAPERS and elected officials are not eligible for unemployment. Okay. And so, the, of course, the unemployment number is very small anyway. Right. So the total associated cost, if we just took that lump sum amount of the 171,573 and multiply it for, by, for the for the rates for FICA and Medi you know, Medicare and Social Security <laughs> together is just around 13,000. Unemployment is about $340. And CAPERS, uh, keeping in mind that this is a little bit inflated, is uh, just under 17,000. So those additional costs would be uh, associated with that kind of an increase 
those would be paid out of the employee benefits fund. So the total impact could be up to 201975 okay, for those one, wages. For the one year implementation. Correct. Right. That would be for one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew it wouldn't be a big number, but at the same time, so we do complete sure. the total cost of implementation. Right. So that is as close as I can get I without that. doing individual yes, um, departments yes. and in positions. Understood. So. And also okay. understood that's inflated number because right. not all of those costs. Correct. Thank okay. You. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah, be less than I thought. That would be number four. All right. I also discussed, so I also gave you on the table um, a little slide presentation about Senate Bill 13. Um, this is, you know, we just got back from our county clerk's um, conference and we did talk about Senate Bill 13 quite a bit because it has passed. It is now law. And one thing that Senate Bill 13 does is it eliminates the tax lid on cities and counties. And so I did, you had asked me to follow up with with Scott Lloyd about the pay plan implementation and potential consequences of that under the tax label, there won't be any because the tax lid is repealed. And um, so this does repeal the tax lid, but it also puts additional requirements on municipalities and the county clerks to send out notices. Uh, we have to figure a revenue neutral rate now that ha there's a, a mailing that's going to have to go out every year. So it's an increased to implement it, it's actually going to cost the taxpayers <laughs> to to send out these additional notices. Now, instead of having a single hearing, you have to have two hearings for your budget if you're going to exceed a revenue neutral rate. But you no have, longer have to look at the CPI and publish um, a notice of vote if you exceed the CPI, and there's no longer an election requirement uh, because the tax lid is removed. And so I wanted to give you the, this is just real basic information right now because we don't know very much. And we have a small group um, of county clerks, um, including our legislative chairperson um, that is working with the Municipal Services Department, which is the Kansas State, their budget department, and uh, property valuation division with the state of Kansas, and then also the major vendors that, that take care of the tax software for the counties in Kansas, and they're working out all the details. But it does change our budget timeline a little bit. And um, we do not have, we do have to provide the revenue neutral rate this year, but we do not have to start sending the notices out until next year. So that notice would go out to every taxpayer um, and that is in an entity that is going to exceed the revenue neutral rate when they're preparing their budget and it has to include a lot of specific information so i think it's going to be a little bit confusing especially at first because the taxpayers are going to get a notice saying hey this is what if nobody raised any any taxes no more dollars than what they had last year here's what your taxes what your taxes would have been Here's what's being proposed, and we have to include the date and the time of the hearing for every entity. Um, so it's, it's going to be a major push to do all of this, uh, but it does repeal the tax list. So it has <laughs> some pros and cons. I think your taxpayers are, are probably going to be a little bit confused, but so hopefully. Your, your neutral revenue rate is going to be based on what you levied the year before. Yes. But it's not going to take into account any um, like valuation changes, those kind of things. It's just going to say, hey, if we if we levy exactly the same dollars as last year, regardless of what our value does, here's what you know what it would be. And then it's going to then you have to look at what your um, evaluation actually is and your budget needs, and then they're going to see that difference, which is you know they've had that before, but this is going to be a little bit well a lot more in depth because it should help them to see in most cases what their actual tax impact would be if they take into account all entities that are taxing rather than just in the past we've done budget hearings and publications that just show each like the county does one and the school does one you know they all do individual ones this is going to make it to where 
we're probably going to try to combine all those on one notice if we can to save the taxpayers some dollars rather than mailing individual ones for every entity that's going to exceed that rate so um, yeah. it's going to be confusing for taxpayers it will we're going to have to make sure that we put on there that this is not a bill this is an yeah. estimate only and it's not going to include specials so when they do get their tax bill it's very likely not going to match what the estimate well, says. Well, that's what I mean. They're, if you talk about a neutral revenue, they're going to say, well, my, I know what my tax is right. so it shouldn't be a dollar. Right. Well, you're not taking, like you said, it's not taking into account any assessed valuation. Right, and it's not going to, you know, so there will be other things that will show up on their tax bill that are not going to be on this notice. <clears throat> so that's another layer of confusion for the taxpayers, unfortunately. I mean, I... I, I I think we know what the intent of the legislation of the legislation is and what what the legislators intended by by passing it but um intent and technicalities don't matter right we did uh we did have a lot of testimony from county clerks on this bill and there were some changes to it based on for the timelines because the initially proposed timelines were not workable at all and so we're thankful for that at least that we have a timeline that could perhaps work so, if everything goes right <laughs> so an, an example of a, a special would be like our transfer fee or solid yeah, waste, solid fee, waste assessment fee yes yeah, so, so that that is going to already throw every single one of them off right i mean now. we may be able to include that on our notice but it's only on residential you True. know properties no, oh, and so commercial just, not just, on a little, just a little slice I mean, yeah little right example. Other examples would be like uh, cities for paving improvements sure. and right, right, curbs right. and gutters, right. and then there are some for for mowing, you know, mm -hmm. that are assessed, and those won't be known at the time these notices go out because the due date for the cities to provide those to us is in August. So, so do you muddy up the waters more by by including a little pamphlet that says? these other are not included that may alter or affect a statement on there maybe all you're going to get it's going to be a lot of information for them to review anyway and if you see there is a sample an idea of what that mailing might look like it's at the very back the very last page this is just a draft of what rick and harvey county um, proposed for the notice to look like um, and I think he put about obviously on here it says this is not a mill uh, this is not a bill do not pay and then it said you know there's something that's going to also be confusing is the state <laughs> mill levy rate is the same every year and so if our value goes up it's automatically going to generate beyond the revenue neutral so we're gonna have to include it but it's it's going to be a little bit confusing so there are lots of notes on, on here this there's a note at the top that says special assessments not included um, it also has a little phrase on here that says additional public funds were required to prepare and distribute this notice <laughs> <laughs> because I think that that bold part needs to be about 10 font compared to that <laughs> but anyway this is really catches an idea mind. of what it might look like but you know, I do see something on here that I, I do like, and I don't know how many of them can have been talked about bill levies, yeah. and it's got the hearing date and time. Well, how many of your fire districts do you get to go and listen to the to the, what they do? There's not very many of them. They sort of like a little band of, of people out here that sometimes don't adhere to all the regulations of mill levies and things like that. Well, they all hold their meetings, and a lot of the small districts hold theirs with the county. Yeah. And they all have to publish it now. But it's not the team. That's what I'm saying. There's a district out people that doesn't do that. No, the, dis the taxing district does publish. At least they're supposed to. They're supposed to. <laughs> no, they do, because if they submit a budget to me, as the county clerk and I send it in, we have to verify that it has to happen so that they're not levying an illegal tax. So they, they are, um, but there's some of those agencies that have like quasi kind of where the, there's more than one district working together, which gets confusing. So that could be one of those. But at least a date and time where you're supposed to be because there's questions on a lot of the, the problem on, on getting out, gathering the information is going to be tricky because yeah. 
just getting all those entities to get back by the date and say, yeah. yes, we're gonna exceed the rate. Here's what our, what it's gonna look like and here's what our meeting date and time is, that's gonna be almost impossible to get them all to, to be able to have that reported back in time to send out the notice within the required time frame. So that's the challenge that we're gonna be looking at. So anyway, good news, the tax lid is gone. Um, right, I mean, um, this is, this is supposed to be transparent and I think that it's it does accomplish that but it's not complete and it is it's going to be confusing and additional cost to the taxpayer so we're just going to have to really try to educate when we do this so it's it's effective for the, the whole of this year but it does it's not effective until July 1 it's okay. no the <laughs> the notice part is effective January 1 okay. The tax lid is repealed, I believe, effective July 1. Mm -hmm. So oh. this upcoming budget year that we're preparing, we will not be subject to the tax lid. Oh. Um, except, I thought this one was retroactive. Sure. I think this was made retroactive back to the beginning of January. Is it? There was some. About that. I'd have to look. Tax lid effective 1-1-21. Yeah, so right. So it's it, it is retroactive. Governor, effective July. I didn't. I didn't hear your question. What's going to be the recourse for the taxpayers themselves if they don't like what's going on? Well, they will be able to go. The taxpayers can can look and see when they're here. This this entity's hearing is, and they can show up. For the hearing if they want to just as they have been able to in the past did you still reject or? yes they, there doesn't have to i mean the the governing body of the entity does have to let everyone speak but they don't have to um, change their course of action based on any comments just to, i mean so anyway just so you're aware it is retroactive back to january it was the law actually is effective on the books as of July 1, but they made it retroactive. That's so. They made it back to 1-1-21. Regarding yeah. the so it goes into effect on July. It's dated back to the January. So retroactive. Right. A year. So then you can just republish your budget and go over at the end of this year. If you, if you just publish it. Um, I, would, I don't believe that uh, so our budget was prepared not going over the tax lid and so any expenditures that we have in our budget would not exceed it anyway the only way you'd republish and go over is if you had extra money come in that you wanted to have authority to spend in this year so as far as uh, the specific impact of the pay plan you know the county does have sufficient funds in its current year budget to do a full or partial implementation without exceeding its published budget or the tax lid. It would just not be out of probably, there would be some individual funds that wouldn't have enough, but it would be, there's enough in the general fund. So. Okay, this 201,000, I'll back up to that then. You said that's for this first year. And then what happens when you come back the second year and implement the <coughs> if that's for a full implementation. So that increases, that puts everyone on a schedule and that is where your base wages are adjusted to. Obviously, every year, if you do cost of living or step increases, that increases, yep. just as, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Okay, but rather than stepping in from a partial year, so over a two-year bar, where you're gonna have to go back and pick up that balance to get caught up, it almost seems like it's easier to, to do the one year implementation. Probably. Because otherwise you're tacking on what you need to step yeah. plus the additional what you didn't do the first year and it just seems like that one's going to be a harder by both but anyway i just wanted to make sure you had all the information Good. so and that's all i have okay any questions any final questions <clears throat> if not move on to uh, Josh Hausman with Weed Household Waste, Transfer Station, Recycling. Josh? I know you've been patiently waiting out there. Well, 
Well, uh, some of you heard last week we kind of had a little fire in our trailer. Um, hey, Josh, can you turn your microphone towards you? Better? Um, it was just the only damage we had was just the, it kind of scorched the paint on the trailer. And stuff. But other than that, everybody did a good job of getting it out and we got it unloaded and the fire department was there and got it put out and we got it soaked down really good and before we reloaded it and then they brought the truck up again and we doused it again just to be on the safe side. So. So just spontaneous combustion. We we don't know what was what what caused it. So it, there's many possibilities of things catching fire. So um, Nelson, they did he did finally bring over a copy of uh, fix that shoot. Um, and he went two different ways, uh, replacing the rubber, putting a metal strap over it. And then he had priced another way of building a chute that hung lower and was all made out of metal. So he gave us two different prices, one for the rubber, one for making that other chute. To, something that needs to be done that way, but I want to do it one time and make sure that we don't do it twice. Yes. Uh, do we have any idea of how far we can come down without getting into our trailers right now? Is it? I was. I hadn't been down there. I think we'd come down a couple feet, and it's still leave about being over about a foot over our trailer. Well, that's got to be better than where it's at. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, other, the other deal is, is if you don't if you don't do any rubber. What's the chances of back up catching it? And, mm -hmm. you know, at least rubber can take that take that time or two. Oh, sure. There's the same height. Yeah, they're within, probably very within, within a inches. Of, yeah, but they all they're all that's pretty. That's still quite general, but yeah. I know the different years. Mm -hmm. Interesting the price quotes you get on raw material now. Five oh. days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Let's see if they got an inventory then. We we'll get 15 days on rubber products. Well, I guess what what's the bent plate deal, deflection? What do we what do we got there? Do you, do you understand what's going on? With it? Yeah, it, he's, they're going to build it so it's going to match up with that ramp, that chute that's already down there, uh -huh. and it's going to be able to bring it down further, and that way if it hits, it's going to push it right into the trailer, and he's going to drop it down. I, mm -hmm. He don't say how far it's going to drop, but he said it's going to be within you know a foot or so from the trailer, um, but I, I'm more worried about our machine catching it too. That's, um, uh, but it was more of it's going to be bolted on in eight foot sections. What's your recommendation? <laughs> I, I, I don't know about this one. I'm, you know, both ways I'm lost on, you know. It, trolley system that you move the truck, it goes up, and you bring the truck into position, it sets back down. But I think Josh's concern too is just, when you take that back hook out, and we've all set and wash it, I yeah. mean, it's, it's not an easy process with the, with the thumb on the end of the machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a pretty wide deal there. If you raise it up too far, you're going to catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea of the rubber mat, they put sections 
So if you tear one out, you can replace a, a small part, of not the whole plus thing. Plus and maybe make the mat hang down farther. Right. Mm -hmm. The truck could drive through it. And yeah. Yeah. Flip up and then flip back down. Because right now it's in, in two sections, isn't it? I think it was. I mean, yeah. It looks like the tour have a grown. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That. Yeah. I I look bit look, but I haven't paid yeah, much attention. <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking at it every day. Yeah. But in, in a way, I, I just my thought is I'd like to just stay with the rubber mat for now. Um, um, later on, the Geary County they're building a new transfer station, and they're supposed to do this. They're they're doing this other different than way we were. And stuff is what I got told for, for their we expected a lot different than what we got let's mm -hmm. just put it that way yeah we didn't get what we asked for mm -hmm. so. I mean they're it's very you can go tour around and take a tour of other facilities and see that the chute coming down puts it in the truck and that's mm -hmm. what it's, we didn't get that I mean it, it's Is anybody in favor of trying the bent plate defection right now? I mean, just draw a poll. Is anybody really? I mean, I, I'd like it if it worked. I mean, or is it, are we taking a shot in the dark here? I just fear the equipment. Yeah. The equipment until it gets treated like it's you wrote the check for it. Yeah. Yeah. Get through the man. So. Try the rubber right now. Is that Actually, then it's pretty interesting to look at Junction City six months after they get this up and run and see if it does hold up. I'm sure we both got the same kind of help. I mean, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's equipment too. I mean, yeah. Sometimes there's more lined up equipment for yeah. them instead of working sideways. And. We're still trying to pack the most down in a trailer that we can, but what happens if we don't try to do that? If we don't pack, yeah. we're going to have problems trying to get it unloaded because there's not that good action and weight on the, that floor. On floor. It's going to take a little longer to unload. Okay. Um, fear of uh, more trash blowing out, tearing the tarps up. That's that'd be my what I look at. If it's not packed down and something comes up and catches that tarp, we're going to rip that tarp completely up. You don't take the tarp off to unload? No. Okay. Okay. Did I hear a motion to do anything? I'd make the motion to go back with the rubber, rubber extensions and maybe make them power. I mean, that's, if Mr. Nelson thinks that would be better, maybe this is the, the correct size. I see it says four inch channel. I wonder what, why is the channel still flat iron? It'd probably be a little stronger than your flat iron. Oh, I, I can agree with that, but it's going to stick out. Mm -hmm. We're worried about equipment, so yeah. it's going to stick out. I just, mm -hmm. We can have them change it to the flat iron. I don't know. I just, I just wondered if maybe they've turned it upside down and with the V out, the, the point to the outside. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what, just uh, looking at that, that's what I would think would be what they do. Hopefully we, they would know best how to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I have a motion on the floor to go with the rubber. And see if I'll get that done. Second by Dave Mueller. All those in favor, say aye. 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 One, one other question. On yes. Uh, being the cost of raw material is so up in the air, if we do this, do you think we should order a couple of extra sections just in case? Um, Stand by. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's going to increase the twenty-two fifty, but. Yeah. And you're going to redo the what's not done right now. You're going to redo the whole thing, correct? Um, I 
I think this was just on that back side, but you know, we, I would like to have that all redone to you know, have that flat put back underneath the concrete. Oh, on the on the west side of the pit, mm -hmm. it's gone. Yeah. This is this would be another price in. And probably so. I'm I'm hoping that was all included here, but um, it's east side. It's east side. It's east side. Okay. But they don't have much spillage over on that. You know, just what they kick over with the bucket once in a while. On the east side? On the west side. West on the west side. West side. I'm so afraid that pulls underneath it. Yeah. I'm afraid that bucket would also catch that, but you know, kind of teeter totter on that west yeah. side. I have a motion by Dave Crowfoot. Did I hear a second by Dave Newman? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I was thinking. Sorry. I was thinking too much. I was, I was worried about what we were going to get done, I guess. So. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, that was 5 0. It was. I didn't see anybody say nay. Why don't we proceed with the motion as it is for now and then see what happens? Like, like what it is, then we'll okay. do the other side. That sounds good. We'll go with that. So, get a hold of them, get it done. <laughs> So with the transfer station, my truck driver, I'm looking for another truck driver. Really? Yep. He put his week and a half in. So this Friday is his last day. He didn't get very involved, did he? he was always by himself out there. Mm -hmm. It's a big issue countrywide right now. Mm -hmm. Truck drivers. Come yeah. off. Yeah. Back in November sometime. Okay. Now we heard a complaint last time that we were paying sixteen dollars an hour from other departments. So uh, open it up to you know if they want to apply, well they sure can. Was interested, so that, that was just a one-time um, approval by the commission for a specific individual with experience, and so the pay plan does not indicate that rate. We go back to the original. So, just clarifying on that. Was well, experience was really why I thought it was addressed transfer station or truck driver as a. We made that a separated position from any other operator long operator It was to just special. It was based for that specific person with their level of experience. So if the commission, I mean, he can advertise and do whatever, but the, if the commission decides to do that again outside the realm of the pay plan, I think you would have to do another approval. Yeah, I think you're right. Are you thinking you changed the whole position? I thought we did. I thought we took it away from operator one or two. We made it transfer station truck driver. This individual was a specific category. It was a specific. Yeah, we just did a special one time pay, special pay pay. That's the way I understood it. We don't have a job yeah, description great. for that, so. Maybe we better get one then because, I mean, I think, I think it has to we should have a rate there for that truck driver. I mean, we, we see what's going on. Uh, and we need to have a rate for that truck driver for transfer state, just what you're talking about, Billy. And we can have a scale there that if somebody comes in with a lot of experience, I can, I'd rather hire them up here if they have a lot of experience than a fresh start. I'd hire them back, back in a little start for that. Tying them outside of the equipment operator one or two, but I would like to know what the director feels his truck drivers should do too. On if they're not trucking, 
are they sitting on the rear ends or are they are they out on the floor or are they helping on the floor or what so then then you can become equipment operators I suppose then too okay, that's that's why it's been tied in the past because yeah. if since there are employee um, they're expected to do other things besides just drive the truck yeah. during their off time yeah. other option is to start looking at contracting again which we did for a long time. I mean, we've done that's, that before. That's been discussed, too. I mean, we haven't done it lately, but in case new commissioners like Mueller, I don't know if we've done it since you've been here. It's new to me. Huh? I would be interested to hear what, what bids would be for the contract only. Okay, the, we had a contract with uh, Robinson Trucking out of Florence for hauling, and they provided the driver, and, and uh, at that time, they provided the semi. And... Uh, then it was under contract to, to haul so much mileage. Are most semis fixed up with the correct pump to run the trailer? Well, that's or part of the contract. Just specialized. They're usually it's just the one a directional, so you know, it, it's most of them should be because we we borrowed. <coughs> excuse me, we borrowed the uh, road and bridges truck, their yellow truck once in a while before we had yeah, gotten and we've used it and it was a when we, was, when we was contracting then it was trips to Topeka. Now we're trips to El Dorado. So yeah. it's it's a different be a different looking contract I would think to get more trips. You know, whether, you're get, whether we can provide them two trips a day or one trip a day. I don't know what we would average to we, I think right now we average about two trips a day is what they average. So. Well, based on the cost of new equipment and the difficulty in re getting a driver, I think I think in, not just in this department, but in another department, we're going to have to start contracting more. So I think it would probably be wise to at least get a get a estimate or a bid so we could kind of compare what we're doing here. Okay. I agree. I think this summer's going to be busy because there's, there's a lot of houses to get reshingled this last go around. I mean, there's 30 or 40, I heard, at least houses could be redone this summer. Well, I'm, I'm speechless. I mean, I don't know which way to go. I mean, yeah, I'd really tell you. You know, it may be way too expensive to do it, but we think we at least need to find out. Yep, at least get a number. Okay. You know, of course, that's another cause and effect with this paint plan. You know, we, uh, we keep fighting this with not just this department, with others that you need to hire somebody and they need to pay way more than what's in our schedule. So, I'm going to look for another truck driver but also get yeah. bidding for yeah for that's both. Yep. Okay. And I will go to that time with <laughs> Kevin over there in Florence and see just exactly if he's interested in getting back into something like this with the county. Whether they would whether we'd have I don't know. I think we need to advertise it somehow because oh, yeah. there there are several around the county that I know that own like their own truck and maybe a rock trailer or something and maybe they would want to bid on it. Oh yeah, I think it'd have to be bid in. I just I don't know if he's back in or if he's interested with with everything that he's doing or not. I don't know. And then like I said, I don't know how to how to put the bids out if going to shoot for two trucks a day or you know two loads a day mm -hmm. is, so, it, is it always two loads so a day? much mile there's not every day's two loads but yeah so it's just one or yeah you know, like you said maybe, maybe per mile sometimes thursdays yeah. might be maybe one load could it's be a more realistic could be could be no you I just can't see more than we or whatever per week how many road flexibility? How many trailers are ready to roll down the road today? All of them. Um, all of them. Even though one of them's not too good shape. Yeah, and it's that one set aside right now in case we absolutely need it. Um, but you know, if we have to, we we can use it. 
and the county always did with previous trucking always bought, put the trailers out there. It was our trailers, they could pull right. the trailers. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what I, was, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can get a lot of bids otherwise. No, I don't have to you can't use a trailer. trailer. Just on their truck, that's only a mm -hmm. uh, trash truck. Okay, I sort of got some direction there, Tina. Understood by you what we're headed for now? So you're going to attempt to hire but also seek bids for contract hauling? Yes. And Josh, we're going to have to put, put something together. They gotta know what they're bidding on. Yeah. So how many votes you had to last six months or something like this? Average? Or? Well, I think we can say that they're that what where they're gonna be going. So are they going only to El Dorado or are they also going to Hutch? Um, we have one to go to Hutch and they've been doing that every Friday or mid late morning. So it's one load a week to Hutch. Mm -hmm. And up to on the days they're going to Hutch, are they also going to El Dorado? Yeah, I've been on one load to El Dorado. Right, so we could get the average number, you know, some sort of a range of the number of trips to El Dorado each week, and then explain about it would be they would be expected to provide the truck, their own liability insurance, their um, their own workers' comp insurance, and we would provide the trailer. Right. Yeah. I would also, I wouldn't want to put it under contract that we're going to have it load every week to Hutchison. and what happens if the trash goes away, recycling goes away? Well, I think we're going to have to put it subject to change anyway, because what yeah. if we have, so, so what if we have three loads a day to go and El Dorado for right. a while, you yeah, know? That's why we're talking about subject to See, most contracts you have, either party has 30 day notice to get out of it. I mean, yeah. either, either one can decide I'm not happy with it. We have to kind of do that anyway, even on the services. Well, yeah. not as much on the services contract, but I still like to do it because of cash basis issues. So you just be out 30 days worth of, we decide to split the sheets. You need an average, so that way you can go with the average. Because some weeks you'll have high volume, some weeks you'll have low volume. Right. But normally you're always average. And if they know the expectation as far as how often they'll be going, I think that they're probably going to. I mean, I would assume that they would bid by mile, wouldn't they? I would think so. Yeah. I, I, I can't think of any other better way to do that off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So it's a short haul. That's that's mm -hmm. it's expensive. We know that sense sometimes. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's. The Topeka Hall was, you knew it was a two and a half hour run one way and a two and a half back mm -hmm. the other way usually. Or two hours. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Josh, anything else? Um, just uh, one more. The, a couple weeks ago when we were in here, we discussed about pay. Um, you got anywhere on that? No, not yet. Other than that, that's it. I think we'll put to check back and see whether what we've done when we was hired and, and backdated whatever it was. But that's the only thing that, that I know has been done. Yet. So okay. we'll get. I'll get with that and see. Check with Tina and see what we can find on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Keith. prayers whatever else lost my mom really appreciate that it goes a long way it's never a good thing but um, I would say she's in a better place so I just want to say thank you uh, I have an employee that is 26 hours over the maximum 
So I'd like to know if I could get a 60 day extension to get them underneath their maximum. Are you talking about vacation hours? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, sorry. 26. <laughs> vacation hours. Vacation hours. Yes, what did I say? You just said they're over their maximum. They're over their max. Okay, yes, vacation hours. Okay, is there a reason why? Um, he just can't take off enough time. He has to, he builds up comp time being on call on the weekends and stuff like that. He just took off a week and thought that was enough and still didn't get it down below that. So we just need to make sure to, to work on it more next time. So okay. somebody that doesn't take vacation. Right. Yeah. Does the commission have any problems? <laughs> But we need, I need a, a name on yep. the authorization. I didn't know if I was allowed to say that in public here, public or not, so. We, no. we do, I mean, when we're so approving so extension and vacation that. time, we do get a name because. Mm -hmm. We can do that. You okay? Okay, it's Jason Creven. I, I have a feeling it's Jason. Yep, yeah, you know, he's he's always one of the first ones to show up when you call from your. Yeah, we don't need to keep talking more about his performance. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cut it there. Yeah, yes, yes, good yes. or bad, let's just yes. stop there. But I do need a motion. Uh, I'd make that motion to extend 26 right. hours for Jason Creven for vacation, get it used up within a. Try to within a 90 days. Second. Six six months, whatever. Try to get. Try well, to get yeah, I was just trying to get right. We just need to do something. Second by Jonah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, what, I, what I wrote down was 90 days. Okay. That's what That's I good. wrote down. So okay. Get that done. <laughs> 69. I would second that. Okay. <laughs> uh, got some updates. Um, we have finished the installation of all the 9 buck culverts, uh, including the precast structure um, south of 190th. That was quite something. They were pretty heavy. We got a rental hull in there, and it still wasn't enough. So, <laughs> but we ended up getting in the ground. Um, so those are all done. Um, as far as the rock crushing, uh, they've had very, very good success. They've been working six days a week. They've got quite a bit of pile done. Um, he has actually taken upon himself to hire another company. It's actually going to start down here on our south shop uh, to try to get started on that to get ahead of there. He, he just, I, I. I asked the question and he said yes, I'm interested. And you know, we found some. He found a contact that would work. One of them, one of the competitors had called me, and so I passed that word along. I've, I've done none of the negotiations, whatever else. He's taking care of everything, but um, he's just trying to get that. Still working with Brad on a couple things yet. Um, whether we're supposed to have a meeting, we have a meeting scheduled Wednesday. Wednesday at two o'clock to come up with the final stuff on that, as far as the payment and the contract language and stuff like that. Um, so. One of the other things that I'd looked at was that a lot of the problems that he's faced is uh, due to the weather and stuff like that. There, this pile he's working on is currently um, pretty dirty, so therefore it takes a little extra time to run it, plugs up, stuff like that. Just throwing this out there, I talked with him about it. I said I couldn't confirm anything, but one of the things we've talked about is that would it be beneficial for him as well as the county to proceed to the middle section, the middle uh, area, North Lincolnville, we think it'll be a lot cleaner, think he can get through it a little faster. And then later on this fall or this winter, come back and, and finish that site up there. That gives us the, the material, the more material than what we're looking at. Right now, what's hurting him is he has to haul so far to get the material back up to the crusher. And that's what's taking a lot of time. Well, this, in the second, second location, he could actually put the crusher a lot closer to the pot. So just a thought, I mean, we don't have to approve anything now, but um, you know, we're, we're definitely not gonna use the 40,000 tons at one time. So the more material we get now, the better off we would be. Okay, so he, he contracted another company to come in? Yes. And that's totally, where was they gonna start? They're gonna start down here at the South Shop. Oh, South Shop? Yes. Okay, okay. I feel like we're at the third spot at South yeah. Shop. And then he would move to the length of this one. Well, like I said, that's just the thought. You know, like I said, he's got a lot of that, that material crushed up there, but it's just taking him so long, and the longer, you know, the farther he gets away, the longer it takes. And mm -hmm. where if he could sit down there with the crusher right next to the other material, it should go faster. Now, again, I don't want to uh, jinx him or whatever else, but, you know, based on what's happened. So just a thought. But and the crushed up from that, from 
uh, Gary Dick Brock's pile, where's it going to be stored at then? Or is it going to store right there? We're going to store right there. Yeah. And then we'll haul it out to wherever we need to or use it from there or whatever the case may be. Because we still have at least to the end of, end of was it July of next year. So, okay. I'll just throw this out there, but I, I prefer he stays where he's at in case, you know, things are looking better, looking up again right now, but you go touch the other spot and we decide to bring in somebody else. Well, I didn't do that. They did that. Yeah. And then we caused this where there's well, a little separation right now. And the other damn thing, downside to that is he would lose a week moving. So, yeah, I mean, there, it's not a perfect solution, but it's just... Uh, I'm just saying, I, I would rather see him stay where he's at. We're going to use up that material pretty fast that they're crushing down? Well, we will We will use up, I, I don't know how much of that pile, but I mean, we can use it a lot faster than he can produce it. There's no doubt about that. Okay. So... Yeah, I heard one commissioner. Do I hear any other commissioners? What thoughts? You need to get another truck, maybe, huh? Well, I mean, the the, big, the, the truck is, is one option. The, I mean, right now with the pile being set up, like it is, he basically has to use an excavator to, get it, to, to dig it up and make a pile so they can load it with a loader to take it over to the like I said, as he moves he farther said, north, it's taking... I watched him the other day. He sits on a little island and yeah. he digs so far this way and he goes this far and then I guess he has to go make another little island. But yeah. the crusher's running all the time. Well, as fast as he can feed it. Yeah, I mean, as fast as he can feed yeah. it. Um, he, he, he does well I didn't sit today but he told me last week he had two excavators one digging up the pile and one loading the crusher so but so anyway, if I guess based on no other comments you want to plan just have him live, stay there yeah I'm sorry, now he's lose a week moving too right right and then it also leaves you the availability I mean if if not getting it done quick bring enough, somebody else bring in. another person in to location that hasn't been touched. Sure, sure. Okay. How long will it take the pile of shop? Well, I don't know. Um, he said they were moving in today. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's going to take them to get set up. Steve and I have to go out there and kind of make a plan for where we're going to store things and things like sure. that. Um, but I, I fully anticipate, again, I don't know how fast they can crush okay. either or what they're going to come up with. I just thought if it's a smaller pile, then there's maybe a possibility of them moving. Well, I don't think the pile is really that much smaller. Oh. Uh, this is, that up there is basically all one, it's pavement. This down here has bricks and all gotcha. pipes and everything else right. in it too. Yeah, so it, it, it is going to take a little longer as far as that stuff. That's true. Good point. But again, I like to, I, I don't know how fast he can crush and things like that. Yep. So, okay. But anyway, like I said, I have no problem. We're just trying to get your, get through this. So. Um, Owen Rock, um, this weather being like it is, we uh, we did get a distributor back, um, so we're ready to patch if and when the weather breaks. We're, we've got that pile. We're working on breaking up the pile up at Pilsen, um, so we can start on that. We had kind of talked about maybe just starting to patch right there on Remington uh, while the materials there come down there until we start getting new material in, and we'll go patch all the stuff that we're going to chip still. But working on that. Um, Finally, getting our scraper put back together, we had to do um, radiator work and exhaust work, and then finding out the um, uh, differential lock has been broke. But we finally found a part, the only one in America, evidently, <laughs> comes from Pennsylvania at sixteen hundred dollars, and it's about eight a grand. But anyway, it is what it is. When you have the older equipment, that's what you find. How old is that scraper? It's been around a long time. I don't even know. Probably eighties. You know. But so it's, it's very handy for the size work we do. I mean, it, it's, it's 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 beautiful for what we do because it's an elevator you can self-load and it's small enough. Everybody says, "Oh, we need to get a bigger one." Well, that's fine. You get a bigger one, then you need to push it, then you can't turn it around, then yeah. you can't dig ditches. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so other than that, that's all I have. Unless you guys had something. So anybody? Open it up. You got the point. gas pumps in yet? No. Uh, something else I'm working with Brad on. <laughs> um, so we've got some. Okay. Questions, I guess, was yeah. the other Yeah, so. But, um, uh, and I don't know, I, I, I guess, Randy, if you wanted to bring it up or not, we got a call about someone driving over rock down there. Yeah. Uh, come to find out, it was a miscommunication that um, the truck driver, the first part of the week, had been hauling down under the blade and then knew about it, was keeping up with the rock. Uh, Steve pulled the truck driver off to do a couple other things, and the truck driver forgot to tell him he was going back to haul rock down there. 
he was already in the process of going over the last week, just hadn't made it there in time. So, uh, like I said, miscommunication, we just didn't follow up to get the blade man out there. So, so. Me, I, when, I, when somebody tells me there's a pile on the road, I expect a pile. It was not a pile. It was just what they dumped and had not been spread out of the back of the truck. Yeah. And, uh, and the person said they'd been driving over for three days, but then the third day they tore the front end of the car. Anyway, so, just, yeah. yeah. We, we don't want to have any of those calls because it's just, it's... Usually, not, okay, Bryce, just talking about that. Usually you expect a blade man behind that somewhere and doing something with yes. it. Yes, okay. yeah, that, and that's our plan because we know even we've got, you know, good truck drivers, they do a good job every night, especially when the material's wet. Okay. They will tend to go boom, and then you know yeah. when they when it comes out of the trailer. So, okay. um, yeah, we we're constantly working on that. And the other thing is, we try not to put it out there thick enough that it's going to cause problems too. You know, so. Yeah. But like I said, we we're, we're trying to do the best we can. We just didn't get yeah. the time. So. Yeah, like I said, I drove immediately to see just what it wasn't the piles that I expected to see. Yeah. It was just from what they were dumped and sure. on the go and yeah. stuff. So, no, thank you, and I thank Steve for. I think he probably went there too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After me. Yeah. So, otherwise, that's it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks. All right. And we have our county commission work session this afternoon on. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. You all said that you had a lot of things you want to work on. And that if we had a short agenda that you wanted a work session added, but I didn't know what topics you wanted to put on here. So maybe you want to develop like a list and then we work on a couple okay. things at a time. So okay. you could maybe use the time just to, to make a talk list about what you list. want to work right. on. That sounds, good. That sounds like a good deal. Okay. And we do have an item. Okay. We need to okay. Well, get wrapped up today. Okay. So we'll have an executive session. session. Okay. So we're going to have an executive session with Brad for. Personnel, not elected personnel. Not elected personnel, okay. I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, well, better not, in case we're smashing out of it. Uh, I guess in 20 minutes. Well, let's start with 20. 20. I never know if that'll be enough. I yeah. probably won't, but let's we'll start with that. Move that we recess into executive session in order to discuss personnel performance pursuant to KSA 75 431 9B. For personnel matters of non-elected personnel with the board brad uh, for 20 minutes be from 145 till 205 then we'll come back and finish up get into work session after that to figure out what we're going to work on second that was a second by jonah all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. Okay, back at 205. It's pretty boring, isn't it? No. No fireworks. No fireworks, right? Yeah, you could have had fireworks, <laughs> Mr. Chappie, let me tell you. This conference will now be recorded. Out of executive session, no decisions. Uh, we're going to move on to public comments first. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh. I missed a button. Can you say no decision? Oh, out of, out of executive decisions, no, no decisions. Uh, we're moving on to public comments now. If there's any public that would like to speak, put your comments up there or chime in. We don't have no public in the building. seeing nothing being posted so we'll move on to commission comments does any commission have a comment i think since tina has provided information and we have all the pay plan information we need to probably have a work session on it other than this afternoon yeah well okay but we yeah this afternoon we're going to we address need that, that this afternoon. we need to make okay an item list of things yeah. to Okay. Oh, I, have. I think that needs to be be on there. So I guess Kinder, it's Paul Oker. You want to put that as an agenda item next week for decision? 
Well, I think we need to spend a little bit of time on it. I, at least, I would, I would go ahead and put it off next week to make a decision. I think it's time to make a decision. Okay, let's, let's, you let's might allow, work on it yet. Maybe allow a little more time for it rather than a normal 15 minutes session or, or as your primary work session item. But we might, it may be an action at the end of that. That's what I mean, if you do both. Do we really want to take it? Action during a work session. That's, that's I thought well, we were we can. we can't yeah. take an action yeah. during a work session. Basically, so, you'd be reconvening. Yeah. Right. So we just make a note on next week's agenda to take an action, whether that's this way or that way. Or, yeah. or well, I think Ken told us is there anything we need to feel out, feel out to see how it's going to be, just feel how the implementation is going to go, and other than what we have in our book. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you know, we we were we'd ask about having Scott Lloyd take a look at the okay. budget to see yeah. what he feels like the implications are going to be. Uh, okay. You know, but now with the tax lid going, I don't. And I did talk to him about that today, okay. and I'm, I'm, I I um, I think you said we have it within our budget. Right. I mean, it would just be. There's there's money within the county budget. If, if even if the individual fund didn't have enough, it would be within the general fund. So there is no implication as far as doing it that doing it this year. Uh, no, the impl only implication would be just limiting general fund funds to maybe a smaller balance than maybe some of us would be comfortable with. I don't know. I mean, if there's specific information that you think I can provide for you, let me know. But the, the, I, but I did follow up with Scott this okay, morning okay. by phone, and, and he didn't really have any. Um, <laughs> well, he didn't have any concerns about tax lid or consequences for implementation, other than just that you know. I guess that my big question is, I've I've always been one that. I'm a bit conservative, I guess. I think we need to have four months worth of four months worth of, of uh, carryover in that general fund all the time. And when it starts dipping below that, I start sweating bullets for some reason because we just do not know what what the going forward is going to have for us. And so. That to, to me, that's the most that's one of the most important things we've got in this county is a healthy general fund because it it allows us to do things. But you don't want to all of a sudden come up one day and say, wait a minute, we got about a month and a half's worth of reserve here. I don't want to be in that position. I don't think a commission wants to be in that position. Particularly with the very limited alternatives we have yeah. to come up with the money right. on a short term we can't, basis. We cannot borrow. It's like, you know, we can't walk down to the corner bank and get any money. Right. I'll take your comments one step further and tell you that I've felt that same way on Blacktop Roads. That I always want some and that that's why I'm always an adamant that I, I want those transfers made because uh, I, brought, I know that the roads is we, we, one of our biggest things that we've got to take care of, is, and along with the general budget, the roads and stuff, and, and, I, and you know, there's been commissioners ahead of me even that come up with the mills to where the, that's when the blacktop started clear back in 2000 before I was commissioner, and and that's how they they thought there was a group of three then that thought that they needed that budget in there, and they expressed to me one of them, the commissioner that I replaced, Leroy. He expressed that wholeheartedly about a, uh, we had a half a day meeting when, when I got elected and he wanted to drive that into me and he said Randy we've got to have some money to build those roads at the cost and he said of course back then when I took over it was quite a bit cheaper than it is today to do a mile of road and so and it just keeps keeps it going up and up and so those are two of the main items that I like to see a little bit of flush I know people criticize us for having some excess money in there but they don't understand the cost of the roads and how to pay for it. I don't, I don't want to put us in a 20 year out pay plan or loan against the roads because it ties the next commissioners up uh, that may want to do something a little different. That's in our small cities with sewer and streets and water, 
they put them out on the 30 and 30 and 40 year plan mm -hmm. and you come in to be a commissioner and or sit a council member in that town or mayor and all of a sudden you, your hands are tied because you got to make those loan payments and, and that's where i first come, come across that in peabody is is loan payments that things that's been done 15 years ago but we're still paying for it 20 years those, later those long-term bonds were really popular for a long yes, time yes they were and yeah. You know, it, it, did, it did provide infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. But you know, when there's still some balance left on them, and and, and there's problems with the systems, then you're yeah, yeah, you, you, you don't have, have a same. secondary problem. Right. So if you amortize them beyond the life of a particular project, it's it's, it's you're yeah. just killing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's and there has been towns with projects that they've had to redo the project. That was done, and yeah. they're still paying on the other one. Refinance you know, you, bonds. you yeah. refinance your bonds, and, yeah. and that's when it starts hurting your credit. Yeah, yeah. Just it's like, like an individual, yeah. a city or county, yeah. your credit yeah. can get hurt. Yeah. You look at and that affect that affects your finances big time. You look at it on the flip side of things, though. That infrastructure cost 20 years ago is what that infrastructure cost today. So to pay cash when you could have borrowed, you kind of look the other way where you made out like a bandit because you spent that money when it was cheap instead of when it was expensive. If we had bought a bunch of road repairs last year or building projects last year, so it's compared to this year, I yeah. can't afford it this year. But I, I do agree with Randy. I think uh, we collect taxes to provide service. We'll need to provide that service. It comes back to striking the balance. Yeah. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Yeah. We are, we're not going to empty our reserve. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to make but you, you know, if you look at reserve. if you look at the scheduled transfers you set up three years ago or four, those probably need to be doubled. Uh, they need to go up. Yeah, we never so. have done that. Yeah. We know. Yeah. Okay. Any final comments before we go into a sort of a little work session for the board? Okay. Well, we're going to change over and go to sort of a board work session of things that we need to work on. To and Tina, you know, we used to have a little list, and I, it's been a while since I've seen that list. Is there any just big things on that list that <laughs> I don't know how, when the last time you put that list out? The whole notebook. The what? The whole notebook. Oh yeah. no, it wasn't that bad. I can start doing the list again. Well. Oh, yeah, just get a big, great big whiteboard. Just leave it there. Yeah, I just. Oh, I don't know. There are commissions. I do. I, 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 I don't know. What's that guy that gets on there that always talks? We've got a whiteboard and he's always. Uh, a room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need me a whiteboard. Not this big. Just write stuff on it. Well, can we start with a strategic plan results we got? Kind of take some of those ideas and move. Yep. Put them on our list. Uh, I think space was probably one of the first issues. Of course, building costs have kind of blown a big hole in that. But at the same time, we're going right off the works. digitization plan can move forward to adjourn into the works. Oh, we need to adjourn it. Okay. Yeah. It's on the agenda, so I thought I could just stay there. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to back up before we get into the work session and agenda, uh, adjourn the meeting. I'd make a motion to adjourn the meeting and go into a work session. Second. Have a second? Yeah. All those in favor of that say aye. 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 Five oh. We're now in a work session and we will not make no decisions. We're just taking ideas and there will be no decisions made for the rest of the day. Uh, Brad, I don't know what you've got going, but if you've got anything for us, I'd let you speak out to us and I'm going to plan from you first. So if you need to get away, what? Okay. Um, I can, and I will, I've got, because I've done it, uh, put together by department, um, some of which have had their input and some have not, uh, different things that need to be addressed based upon what I've been able to find or I've noticed and based upon questions asked of me. Um, and you can pretty much take each department and there are different things, whether it's procedural kinds of things, protocol issues. Um, that need to come to you, they can be interdispersed to some extent, we can do them by the department, very much like what we did with Sharon. Kind of an overview of these are the things we're confronted with because it creates a lot of policy decisions for you to make. 
um, you know, as you'll recall, we need to come back to that one. Um, and planning and zoning is going to be some educational exercises with uh, perhaps the state. Um, so it won't be something that we do overnight, but there are certainly going to be elements of it that we can act upon as we go. Um, something as simple as uh, our general policy on what kind of control we want over roads when dealing with some of these, like feedlots and, and those kinds of areas, as she and I were discussing. Also, the, the uh, extent to which we want to be aggressive about things like um, non-compliance, because like she said, it seems on average we're always in excess of 10, uh, and they roll in and they roll out. Um, and we have some that are absolutely never going to do anything unless they're compelled to. And that then puts us in a position of, well, <laughs> how far, do we call someone's bluff or are they calling ours? Um, and make some decisions about what well, we will think and plan for a couple of those a year where we really do have to go out and, and get a court order when that sort of thing is the last resort because we just don't have another option. Uh, and I'm not advocating one way or another on that. I just know that she will call and we'll talk about them and uh, we're like, well, we've done all we can do in terms of politely request and then demand and then cite the, the current regulation at the county level and you must get this done. And it's kind of like, well, show me that I must because I'm not going to do it, or I don't have the money, or I don't see that that's right. ever been an issue in the past, and I know I've got neighbors who've never had to do it, so why do I? <laughs> it's those kinds of responses that we get. Um, and we, we have gradually progressed, and you know, consistent with that department, to a countywide system of control, or at least a regulation, and now we need to make a determination about how much we, intend, we mean it. Is it's, it's I've been at it for a long time, and that is certainly going to always be uh, something where you'll find people who just they don't care, and it's really that way in the county uh, because they're used to not having to do anything. Um, so we're going to either uh, begin to, to illustrate that no, you really do have to do it. Then the times have changed. Blah, blah, blah. So, so I guess the, the short form answer is. Uh, uh, and then Bryce and I will meet again on Wednesday because he was another fairly labor-intensive department in terms of a lot of things. Uh, you were asking about those tanks. I'm going to go see him as soon as we're done here because we've run into a little dispute uh, with them that we're going to have to resolve. Uh, you'll need to be made aware of some of that as we go. So there's always going to be a pretty healthy list of those things as well. Um, noxious weeds. Uh, you know, things like that, and we've got issues with, there again, with people, we try to address it, they don't do anything, the next year it's just as bad, the next door neighbor who is conscientious comes in and says, yeah, I've got an absolute infestation, what are you going to do? Um, you know, that's a good end question. So, so, it's kind of the short form answer I can give, but it's, it begets a lot of stuff. Cool. Seen some healthy, healthy uh, horse weeds. I mean, the purple flowers growing already. This the flowers haven't grown, yeah. but the plant is. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's healthy. Plus this one. That's that's kind of interesting because years ago, and I know, of course, the legal climate is just ridiculous. But years ago, the county just went out and sprayed, mm -hmm. put it on the taxes. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, was still, you had to give your notice, you know, one or two or what three notices. But after that, it just was done. So I guess what you're telling me is there's way more to it now than there was then. Yes and no. I mean, we can still do that. And that was our discussion the last time we had this last year. But the problem that we run into is the cost of that continues to escalate. And, and when we've done it, and then the next year we're doing it again. And you keep rolling these things on the tax yeah. rolls. Yeah, the and taxes then catch up. Yeah. With the and so, and then we've got the citizens, all of us, are picking up that tab um, for some of the same people. And they're like, what other alternatives do we have? Well, we do have some. But again, now, now it's not just, it's really expensive enough to go out and do the, yeah. the re remediation kind of things. It's a lot more expensive to go in yeah. and, and uh, start foreclosing on some of those expenses. Uh, but again, do you make an example of a couple of those and hope that everybody hears about it? Or what do we do? Uh, 
and that's a, seems to be a constant issue that we have in any regulatory environment that we're in, and that includes even road and bridge at times. And you can drive down some of these roads, and we've got guys farming the entire ditch. Oh, yeah, we've been so, fighting that for <laughs> some of it's almost comical, yeah. but they're right up to the road now, right. and they right. gradually move out about two feet every year. I've watched some yeah. of them. You clean the ditch out. And then they plant the ditch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I saw one that they did a root rebuild, and the guy literally planted down the side, <laughs> the side of the ditch. And with with flex equipment, they can now come up the other side. Oh, again, right. By the way. Yeah, they can cover the whole thing. Yeah. And I just, yeah. I'm thinking, I already farms 1,800 acres. Do you need yeah. acres? <laughs> Every foot helps, I guess. I don't know. There, there's. There's one other one here that's out in Braddock, and we'll let you keep going unless you've got some more. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're just talking about today truck drivers for transfer station and cost, maybe going out and contracting out and stuff. I have always been on the other side of how much we stir up on collecting cost at that transfer station. The reason, here's one example that those operators down there have, have told me over and over again. There's people that get paid to go out and clean up houses out of these old trash houses that we got. They go clean that up, bring it around there and dump it for nothing, but yet they get paid to do it. Uh, I just saw this in Peabody this last week. People moved out. There was a big old fifth, one of those new lift trailers. Uh, you know, it's about a 16 foot bed that lifts itself up and pulls on a truck things heaping up and it's going to go to our transfer station cost on that that's just one field of, the, of cost that i worry I, I think and then bringing we're so used to bringing the horse traders in things and costs for that uh, we only charge for c and d uh, the heavy loads of stuff that comes in of lumber and things do we do we ever rationalize that we need to maybe look at, and I don't know who the who the God is that says we're going to charge for this, we're going to charge for that, or we're going to let it all go. But if, I think we can cut our cost on not on our taxes, and not, I don't want to ever see us go up above 100. I I didn't want to raise it to 100 even from 80 here not too long ago. But is there something we need to do to evaluate what we charge for in that business? Other than well, we've, been, we've been waiving the fee in the name of economic development and being the good guy. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, at some point in time, you say we can't do that anymore. And I, I, I don't know. I know we're a lot less houses. We're collecting a lot less money than what we was 20 years ago or 16 years ago when I started this job. And so I, but we. We've built a few houses. There's been some come on, but I'll bet there's been more go off than there has been and not collect from than, than we have built. So that's just something that, I don't know, it's in the back of my mind that we're not doing our due diligence. So that's, are we looking, do we need to be looking at the profitability of the transfer station? I don't want it to profit, I just want it to cover itself, yes. Well, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It. Yeah, I know, but that's a fine line yeah. between covering mm -hmm. itself because we never know what our costs are going to no. be because no. we're always breaking some. Yeah. I mean, how much do we spend that six months and how much do we take in? Yeah, but that's, then you got to you got to figure in, okay, are we going to blow out another trailer or is it? Well, is it, you know, you got a certain amount. Well, that's something we need to know. If we would haul a million dollars worth of trash. How many more out one trailer we need to add? The 13 model down there, that's seven years old and sixty thousand dollars a trailer. So we need to add so we, that's that's how quick we wore one out. We need to add five hundred dollars a month for tra trailer cost. Yeah. Kind of like to buy equipment, you know. Oh yeah. You know it's gonna wear out in five years, so you divide that by sixty and that's how much a month you gotta add to expenses. Well it's basically doing a cost analysis on 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 it, on it as a sit alone business. I mean, it is solely funded yeah. without Avalorum taxes. So, right. Right. I mean, right. 
we already have that in a way if you just look at what is meant. Did we ever intend that to be profitable? Not necessarily profitable, but you have to, like you said, to you gotta have expenses. incidentals. Yeah, you gotta pay for that new building. So. Yeah, you gotta have the new trailer because they're not gonna last forever. A new semi because it's not gonna last forever. You're gonna have to. So it's not profit per se, it's just cover. Covering the cost, that, that, and there's going to be some big costs some year, and there's going to be just normal costs. Yeah, you got a hundred thousand dollars a year, you got to have the repairs and equipment. Yeah, they, that's including their personnel and their employee benefits. And we only percentage of Josh's pays out of there, not a not, not his whole pay or anything, but a percentage goes to Josh from there. I don't remember bigger what it part, is. bigger part goes from there, I believe, is the H. W. He's the little part. Yeah. Well, he's paid out of weed. Oh, no. really? Weed, H H W, and transfer station. Yeah, there's so. Yeah, I don't remember the percentages, but I would have to look it up. It's changed at different times. So I don't know at the moment. Um, can I mention yeah. courthouse security should be on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we found out one thing. There's five, six of us, seven of them, seven of us sat here when, when we needed some, needed some action, and all of us were sitting here with our tongues open, like, what the hell do we do? And that was, I mean, I'm, I'm just making fun. I'm, I'm not making fun of it, but it happened. Part and of, part of that's because the sticker on the door over there it shows a gun with a cross going through it. <laughs> yeah, but that was a situation that probably. You know, we can't keep it. The, the reason why it, some of us couldn't, we didn't know whether the court hearing had been had, whether, whether there was any in action or not. But, uh, but uh, I know that, uh, what was it, the time we re revisited the, uh, what was it, the metal de the detector yes. type thing? Yeah, that was a nightmare. And, uh, and, and, addition, and the additional security. But we've never had a cough proposal on it, really. So. It's, it's more of a logistics nightmare. Everybody would have to come through the one door. Mm -hmm. and, we and did it during COVID. I mean, it's yeah. worked. Yeah, that's worked. I mean, I don't think anybody, nobody blamed me about having to do it. Yeah. Then you, you've got to man the door. So if somebody exits the door, they could let somebody in through that door. You mentioned yes. storage building, didn't you, Dave Early? Yes. You mentioned storage, didn't you? Dave yes. Early did. I got the storage on my list. Just... Does anybody want to say anything that they have written down on their list? I saw no. more than one of you writing. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, we did do a strategic plan. So we did talk right. a lot about digitization of records. I'd sure like to see that one. Even though building costs have gone up, we can at least get some space by digitizing records. No. We can, we can definitely compare new cost with existing at right. this point. <laughs> so I got CIP on my list and I got administrator on my list because those were two things from the, the deal. Um, um, we also talked about having work sessions with Road and Bridge. Um, storage buildings, just so we can free up space. Tech, tech options for labor shortage. So we we'll move more to technology, knowing that we're gonna have labor shortages. It won't save you any money. I mean, well, people. contracting falls into tech too, because you're, okay. I mean, you're, you're, you're finding a Keep different finished. method to do more Great with less. <laughs> Sorry. The uh, contracting out of the door. Yeah. So she had the county, uh, the courthouse security. <laughs> Um, we did same paper. I also have a note on tax abatements. Just you know, what brings the wind farm in with a tax abatement. Well, what about other businesses with tax abatements? Um, and then something I brought up a while ago was uh, addressing roads that go to oil field pieces. I kind of have a thought on that. Conceptually, going to be in that same category with those feet lines. So, so we'll kind of go, well, well, that's producing one, one barrel a day. Well, uh, I, was, <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking more along the lines that if uh, it is a county resident 
their, their businesses within the county. Um, they, and, and there's so many barrels yeah. produced. If the company is addressed in Marion County. Addressed and they have, and, the, and their, their own resides, their CEO or somebody resides in Marion County. Right. That means they're invested, they're here. I'm just looking at ways to, to look at people that invest here and, and hold them, well, give, well, be more friendly to them. And like, like I said, the only thing I, when we go there is, is what is, what does a feedlot do? Got a guy who's sitting out here eating his function, you know. He always get his roads are never good enough. And yeah. that's what you're saying about the oil well person, right? There. Their roads are never good enough. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a difference. Yeah. You can travel those roads in the mud. <laughs> you can't travel those I think we need to find out from from the counties that are heavily in the oil how they handle what. Maybe you know what a little. I'd like to hear some all I, all I know is where my cousins live in Graham County, Kansas. I'm not saying that the county doesn't give them any gravel, but all the maintenance are done by the oil company. Let's see that. So that's what you already got in place. The wind farms, when they can, they have to build their own roads. Right. Why you should well feel any different. No, I just, you know. And then they should have the uh, Kirk and Michael inspect them to make sure they don't have to take a lot of money to rebuild their room. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's your solution. So. I mean, I see where you're coming from. I, yeah. I, yeah. You know, if I if I owned an oil lease and I couldn't ever get to it, and I was a taxpayer of Marion County, you know, I'd probably complain too. Yeah. And then they got some of these other guys that are out of Texas, and, you know, they, they're not. They, they, they bought the weeds so they make money, but they're not invested here. Yeah, somebody that's invested. And they probably hire a pumper that lives in El Dorado. Yeah. I mean, it, there's nothing invested here. We do have. Other than the lease. We do have, on the south end of the county down there, we do have a lot of the pumpers and things that comes from out of county and from coming from south and El Dorado County. They come back running the Peabody wells and things like that. I do see some of that. Yeah. I mean, there's some value to that too. Yeah. 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 One industry, then. What do we? No, because then we go across the board. Well, if the guy has cattle out in the pasture, he has to get semis out there to load them in, in and out. Right. The, um, We're not helping him. He the, does his own work. What's the, what's the property tax on a, on a section? Hmm. Just curious. Five what, grand. What are they doing? Five grand. Just grass? Just grass. Okay. You know, because you pay more, six thousand. And because you pay more taxes, that means you get more service. Right. Right. So, but then you got one oil well in the middle of a section. In the middle of a section that pays seven. Is grass side over five dollars an acre? I I don't know. I'm just it's a lot. I'm just wondering. I, I might be a little high. Maybe a little low. To be honest. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying. I mean, with, with this going down a slippery slope here, where we're picking on industries and we're trying to cater to them. I well, mean, Marion Manufacturing down here, how much money they pay in taxes? But they got $10 million worth of equipment down there. How many employees? Right. 40? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
and they're not, we don't pay the parking lot. Right, but how often <laughs> does a road get used? Every day. Yeah, how um, often does an oil lease road get used? I don't know, once a week? Every day. For one vehicle, yes, or two if there's a problem, or, yeah, or, yeah. or a pulling rig, or for yeah. a tanker. Well, it's just going nice weather. You know how well the market works, right? You pick and choose. We've talked about a number of things here already. I think what we need to do is prioritize them. What's most, you know, what's the top two things we need to work on? Top three. Okay, you're not going to get them all done in a year. Well, well, number one, it's been a long time coming. I think everybody knows it. Is a, we just never went and got a price from from somebody and, and said, "What's the cost to build a storage building to take care of our storage problem?" Uh, I mean, we've never got that cost. Well, we talked about since we're doing the new EMS building to see what kind of mm -hmm. price that they if they if it would yeah, if they, it would be beneficial if it would save us some money by. Getting a price from them. But well, do we know how much space we need? Do you, we don't know how much we're renting. I think there we? was a, a kind of a there was an eighty by ninety is what we sketch had, had a sketch, sketch or something. But, but how much space are we renting from other people? Like, well, see, nobody's ever put that on or somewhere around twenty five hundred. Oh, 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 we're sure of that. I mean, we're, we're renting offices. I might be. I might be leaving something out, so it could be higher. Well, something we need to do an inventory. Well, we'd be in, right now. We're we renting, we're renting for the health department. and renting for the uh, zoning. Planning zoning. zoning. We're renting the space in Hillsboro for the what yep. generators, generators, and, and trailers and stuff. But yeah. I mean, as far as that's renting a place way. to take documents. We aren't really renting any no. space for that right no. now. There are some documents in the Hillsborough storage area. Is yeah, there some over there? I believe so. I can't say something about one or two tops. I mean, I would, I would, I go right along with that storage building idea because that that plays into the CIP. It plays into if you, if you were to get an administrator, you need some space to put them, so you got to clear some space somewhere. Um, you, I mean, there's a lot of things that fall right into that. It's a simple little shell structure that's obtained. To do. Yeah, I think the worst part that I see is if you don't plan for if you plan for putting people in it, then you got another set of rules to play by versus just storage space. And uh, you then some of the school, huh? Gotta put utilities. I mean, well, yeah, well, you would anyway. Sewer, and water, and stuff, and you got to have some. But I'm just saying, if you put more people, then you got to have more water and sewer places and stuff. And so uh, that was that was the reason why that there was 50 foot left on the south end down there. That if it 50 by 90 or 80 wide, that it could be put in at, at a different time for a building for health or whatever or something like that to, to be put in. So. Well, I know if you talk to most of the employees that work inside this building, they'd say courthouse security is awfully important. Yes, yes. And that was also just a paycheck requirement, a check away from being done. It's just, a, you just gotta buy it. You know, it's, it's easy, it's right. easy to, to sit back and not do anything oh. because nothing's happened. But yep. if something happens, yeah. we could look back and say, what well, in the world did we We do have uh, some things in the works on some proposals on that. We started like, with the tech committee looking at just cybersecurity and cameras and um, that's kind of expanded a little bit so there'll be some information coming at some point in the next month or so as far as potential like access control and what that might look like. So um, what I was going to say about the storage though, we really need to assess the space that we already have do some cleaning up, facilitate some sort of a house cleaning type event to where we can clear out items, look at spaces that aren't being used for any productive purpose, and maybe we can expand through the through digitizing some things. Right. Well, the tour yeah. that you gave Dave and us, uh, there's a lot of equipment in this building that's just taking up space. 
Yeah, and, and there's a lot of, just um, in some offices, there's a lot of just things sitting that nobody ever looks at and that could be potentially um, expanded to be more office space or some better use of space. Where if we just, if we build a new building, great. That's, I'm not saying yeah. we don't need it. But what are you gonna put in there? Who's you, Specifically, who are you gonna put, who are you gonna put in there? Um, yeah, I think it has to be both, where you look at what you what you have, what you can get rid of, what, how you can improve your current functions. Because yeah, there's certain documents you have to keep for Someone yeah, but here. does it say we have to keep them here? You know, or can register, we digitize register. them, access them on the computer, and store them off-site? Right. Yeah. You know, those, I mean, would, I think we need a deeper evaluation of that. Uh, some of the things I put on my list were it's tax sale, policy and procedures. Tax sale, how often are you going to do it? Are you going to bid that again? What's your plan for tax sales? Uh, I put the NR program, neighborhood revitalization, on my list. That's something that should be reviewed. and. Plus, possibly either eliminated or changed. Um, and then I did put a land bank on here, uh, something that you might want to consider for um, to where you could sell properties outright instead of going through, you know, I mean, you'd have to go through a lot of the same steps depending on um, the situation with that property, but it might be easier than once the tax sale is done to be able to market those properties. So those are things I put on my, but. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, I, I, I know we turn it over to the communities all the time, but when I first started, that was one of the questions that I prepared that memorandum and kind of was the overview of it, um, how the process would work, and it would streamline in some ways. Uh, it serves as a repository for these inevitable situations where we're stuck with these properties. Yeah. Could you send a copy of that out? If you've already got it written mm -hmm. up. It's all done. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'd like to send it out again. Something else that's a topic that's been brought up but hasn't ever been moved forward on over the years, and it's a budget issue, is the connecting links with the cities. Yeah. You know, I know that we do a lot to help the cities. Like, with the we do some of the road work that's going in, so that our, our connecting links agreements are outdated, that we pay the cities, but we've also made some changes on how we're helping with that. So. A policy updating that at some point would be. I know this and you don't like because it's a lot of work, but I noticed the policy manual for employees is uh, 11 years old. Yeah. It's got to be updated. Yeah. Nobody likes to do that, but we say it. It may not be a lot of major stuff, but we do need to have an update. I thought this last one said 2017. The one I got said 2020. We have made updates, some updates over oh, yeah. the years That's, that are The date on the cover revised date was 2010. Yeah, but uh, as far as an overall, I mean, yeah, yeah right. we do need to do yeah, that. That needs to be done. Yeah. That really is a lively and enjoyable experience for all concerned. Can I join in? Let's see if we're figuring it out. Sure. But it does need to be done. I wasn't trying to not, not let you narrow things down. But. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to add a few to start it. Okay, so three whiteboards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that was, I, I just went back to that. I just looked at my list again and it says a whiteboard. I've got ten of them. I can bring three. Uh, it would just be handy to have a whiteboard. Oh, sorry. Sorry. As opinions change, you can clear, yep. post, and it's up there looking yep. at us yep. every Monday. I, I, I'll bring them next week. I, 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 I use whiteboards all over the shop. I use them in my house. <laughs> it's just a constant. It's not a bad, not a bad idea. It keeps it in front of you. Yeah. The only thing would be better if it had a line to it. So it, it was griping at you to get it done. <laughs> we get the smart boards that are you every week. At least, it, at least yeah, if you're looking at it every week. Smart board would actually tie into what we talked about making better or getting pricing yep. for well, you probably should put that on your list too. Your commission revamp, commission room revamp. Virtual meetings. Um, the only thing is, you know, when you're thinking, 
one thing about that is when you think about putting more funds into this room, one reason you didn't right. do it last time is because have you outgrown this room? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so. That's the question. But have we uh, the virtuals pulled in? It seems like it doesn't fill the room anymore. But then again, the next one. What's, 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 what's the next one? What's the new one? What's the new normal? We don't know that yet. What's the next uh, thing that Isaac brings us that gets? Is, out of all the years sitting here, what happens if the commission room is not attached to this building? Well, we can't ask Tina for too I much just, advice because then she can't just run back and grab it. Right. I mean, that's, that's a big draw, and I know that is, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I sometimes wonder if the commission room should be separated from this building. I don't know. Thought about that too. But then, I don't know, just see the, the amount of times that we ask a question and then the answer is just yeah. like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I understand that you're going to have a building sitting over here before long. Yeah. It's, it's going to it's going to change. Is there they'll probably do it this year? I would think. And then there's another entity that can move right on in. Oh yeah, there's other entities that move right in too. So, but. Growing pains, let's put it yeah. that way. <laughs> I still see the, the benefit of the, and I, I don't want to be, read it too bad, but I still see the benefit of, of maybe getting the biggest footprint shell building you can get out here. Because of count, uh, the pricing is increasing, it's going up all the time. So if you could just get the shell built, a footprint made. And then work you, out the details of what you want to do with it. <laughs> yeah, and you build it with 14 foot sidewalls so you can get trailers in if you want, or you can double stack conexes in there for storage. Mm -hmm. Double stack what? Conexes, C drains, the, mm -hmm. the, Just, I mean, there's just options within a just get a structure up and a footprint, your maximum footprint established. We would need a 14 or 16 foot sidewalls on the original building. Yeah. Yeah. 16 would be better. Yeah. But I'm looking, I saw them slap this dollar or family dollar store <clears throat> down there this weekend, last Thursday and Friday, and then this weekend. It's the structure, the shells there. Yeah, there's the frame of it. And it's, it don't have high walls on it, it's small walls. So. Yeah, they, they put it up by hand, more or less. That's a little old telex telecrane you know just a little tiny machine so that when you go to build 16 foot sidewalls you use the bigger machines stuff so, uh, you're swinging rafters yeah swinging beams yeah swinging beams and what we saw the shell down here we just saw that down here at the transfer station i mean that's a shell i don't know i bet they're, they're our size is a little taller than what necessary probably you know, but uh, for for our storage building you know. but uh Someone going to place priority on anything? Courthouse security is going to be thinking about them for a while. Put this all on the list, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I we, oh, I thought I heard you say no. <laughs> and the whiteboard. Couple spaces. Do we take care of the, the roads around the county lake? Lakeshore. Lakeshore Drive. Just Lakeshore Drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. That welded addition, that's another one that we do take care of. They was, the commission adopted it when it was put in due to the road widths was given and everything. So it was, it was black top, I mean, the yeah, it was black top when it's handed in. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, what did, you don't really? talk about the lake roofs. Well, no, I'm just talking about what we take care of in work. some of those areas that don't take, uh, don't take, yeah, it's really probably a piece for the work session with Bryce on the road clear bridge plans, but anything that we need. Like East Shore, where there's not gonna be really heavy equipment going on in the roads, is it beneficial to build those roads up and then chip seal them and just call it good? 
I mean, he's short of that roof. They just have pads. I know, but that's what I'm saying. But they, <laughs> they have they have easements, so and they have widths that's right. accommodating. Right. But I mean, when yeah. they put those roads in, all they did was took a bleed, straight, yeah. just right. There's no ditch. No, it'd be beneficial rather than maintaining those to just build them up and, and chip seal them and just call it good, and then because they're not really putting eighty thousand pound trucks on those roads, and they're not. So, Except when they bring trailers around bowls and bowls and old homes and stuff. Except you still have to chip seal them over the time. East Shore has been getting chip sealed, what, every two years? Not East. East Shore. I mean, Lake, I mean Lake Shore. Lake Shore, yeah. Lake Shore's been, yeah. been getting with chip seal, I think, yeah. every, every, every other year. Yeah, whenever, which is, whenever we do it. Yeah, which is a lot more than our county roads. <laughs> so I, I don't know, just throwing that out there. Maybe some, some areas that lack maintenance but be good. Do something to not have to maintain. What is the general feeling out there? You own property out there, Kent, you know, on East Shore. East Shore about the roads. I tell everybody at East Shore they're they're blessed to get a blade to run down it and get sand for them. <laughs> because the county that's an improvement district, but is the county actually responsible for those roads? I think we just have always taken care of them. I don't think we actually have a responsibility. At all on those roads. That's much when well, the plat was accepted. You'd have to go back to see what was accepted. That's what I mean. You yeah. have to go back to when mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. I just, I just nobody can tell me that. It should be right over there, whether it's on that plat or not. It's in that office over there. Yeah. Deeds. There's also because limitations it, on some of those where if it is built to county standard, the county inspects it and then says we'll take it, but we never have. That right. was a smart way of doing it. There's right. a, Dealt with that one individual. I mean, we've always just the county's just always gone out there and bladed two or three times a year. Last year, they actually sanded it, sanded it all again. Well, they put some rocks on, on, the, on the east west road. Yeah. Um, so, and, I mean, and you know, I, I asked for that because I said that everybody gets that and if it's on the east west roads. I get more. Everybody, call, I get more comments as, as, as if the county sheriff needs to be out there because people speed up and down. Uh, oh, I you can only like, speed up and down so much. I get that from down there. Yeah. 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 Over here. But the East Shore, I, in fact, went out there yesterday and the sheriff was going by right then. So, and then I asked for some final decisions here. If anything put on the list that we can think of, or? Uh, I got I got one. It should be a no brainer. But we kind of got caught up in all the things. The paper. What? The paper. Yeah, it's on my list. <laughs> okay, so it's at the top. Yeah. If we're going to make a decision next week, we'll probably yeah. need to talk about it. Cross it off next week. Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to come up with two or three or four priorities. I mean, we've got a list here that everything's important. But you know, you're only going to get, if you can get two or three of them knocked out in a year, Start early. Good start. Yeah. Well, okay. even even just a couple of them. Yeah. I think courthouse security and space are two big big deals. You know, road and bridge is always going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk. There was one down there at the bottom that I that I helped implement when I come in. It was just being brought into us, and and I don't think it's done what it's what what we all expected to do. And that is neighborhood revitalization. Yeah, we've and, talked about it, and it it just never has done what it was supposed to do. And personally, I'm sort of even though I'd like to get a little bit of tax money back, but I got a check back from the county for four dollars and twenty cents on one place that I built a shed on. Well, I, I, I don't think it was worth processing the check. I mean, you know, I know they did their job. Well, I think I have to. But, but, just it just, I, I just assumed that anything under $25, the, the county didn't have to write a check. No. I mean, the statute gets in trouble there. Well, I know what we live with. I mean, would it, would it be beneficial for them just to, uh, what does the state do? somebody to turn it into sheets to the state the secretary of state takes it yeah what is it? keep the fire 
Yeah, and then they have a list of all the people who stayed there. You're talking about unclaimed property? Yeah. yeah. They hold it. They can ultimately default it to the school districts. But. Isn't there a, a um, I don't know if it's on everything though, in the county set a policy, the, a no refund policy under $5 yes. or something? Yes. Yeah. Because the cost of distribution is higher. Than yeah, the so I think that, that that's a possibility of, of setting some sort of a policy, but I don't know if that's going to get across all statutes. And, I can't uh, tell you that either on everything, but I, I suspect it probably is if it's low enough in terms of what you set your, your threshold at. The plan sounds like a good thing, and really, it just it does give some people money back from your tax. You don't ever see it very often, and it was a good thing when you get some decent checks back, but. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to especially with building costs today, I don't know if I'm gonna build with paying for the lumber. I want to, but I don't know that I want to. Yeah. Will it go back now? No, I don't know. See soon. Well I'm a little year or two for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, any final motions? Anybody got any motion to make on this here? Okay. Stop well, it. I don't think there's a motion to be made, but I think we can. I think we should take two or three or four of these and work on them. Whatever we think is most important. Yeah. For me, I'd like to see the whiteboard so we can all start putting everything up. Make a motion. I'd like to see the white next week. I will take bring all these. The make a motion next week. Next week. So we can work on them. Next so we can take all these and start writing them down. That's a full stack of them. And then, and then you can set priorities. You set it beside the. It goes beside the calendar before, so we can look at it. I want it. I want it to stare at us. Yeah. Um, I mean. Sounds silly. It's, it's just, and then I would say the CIB start making headway on that because that was part of this particular top address. I think they were portable. Priority. Well, you know, several of several of these have just been hanging. Yep. The courthouse security is hanging. Base has been hanging. Uh, connecting links have been hanging. And don't forget the house building repair. I have the quotes huh? out or the RFPs went out, but I haven't gotten anything That's back. That's so. It's due in May. Uh, I think the fifteenth, or I think it's due this week. Okay. I have to double check. I know one company came out and looked at it because they came and asked me a question, so. Okay. The land bank could be, could yeah. be useful. Although, you know, we've got two cities with land banks. Uh, you're losing tax dollars in them. I mean, that's what cities are doing, putting those properties in it so that they don't pay taxes. I don't know about the hundred dollars building uh, it's trash says on it, but whether that goes away when they do that in the land bank or not. But I think we can designate that whether or not they, it goes away and that probably needs to be addressed by all the specific assessment. policy because the agency that builds the special is the one who gets to decide if it's waived or not. I can leave. If it goes into a land bank. Ultimately, it's the land bank board to make that decision. As I recall. Uh, but but the the agency that bills the specials, like if it's a county special, the the land bank board doesn't have any authority over the county whether we charge them that special assessment or not. I don't think. That's I mean that's true. I guess I'm normally the land bank uh, board. Not always, but generally, is the uh, the same as this board, and they don't have to be. But like in the cities, right. I almost always have the commissions doing that. So. Right. 
so right. the same. So the city can make its decision if it's billing specials, whether it continues to bill specials. Right. But if it's a special for another entity, I don't know that they have. Can take it off. Yeah, no, that's, I, I don't disagree with that because the way the statute reads. Might have to check that one. Yeah, but the one of the major advantages to the land bank anymore has been that a lot of these properties, especially if they're held by a, a bank and they finance them, uh, they have, of course, all the larger banks have a program in place still where they will donate it to a land bank because it wipes off automatically all the ad valorems and everything else that they're sitting there holding back for. So that's a win for them, plus the donation adds to that win so that what they have in place is another charitable uh, donation that's deductible. So they just paid money. Well, they did it, so did we. Here's the property, you take it, we wash our hands of it, you indemnify us, we'll give you 10 grand. And that's how we, a lot of the cities, when I've done it, have funded their land bank. Because land banks make money in a lot of cases. Not all of them, but most of them. And I, the very, when I set one up in one city, within 10 days, they were flush because they got two houses, Bank of America, and I don't remember who the other one was, or maybe Bank of the West, uh, came in and gave them a house that was rehabilitatable. Um, and so they took the houses for free. They got the 10 grand from each of the banks. So they had 20 grand, and then they sold the houses to a local uh, uh, rental property person for very little, so he got it. And, with the agreement that he would rehab those and, and within six months, which he did. So then they were back on the tax rolls. So there was- It, it there can't was, work. Yeah, it can work very well if it's done correctly. As long as everybody just took Peter held to the fire. Yeah. Yeah. So there's good potential. I'm in favor of shutting this down, move, adjourn it if nobody else has anything to add to this. In 2021. So, I was going to add the same on 2021. Yeah. yeah. Did you make a motion? Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody else got anything final? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Whiteboard coming. Yep. Here we go. Big one right over there. You got the four by eight sheets? No. <laughs> then you can do the fire with one. Uh, well, that's, I hear they're going for about $1,000 a piece down on Home Depot.